Hello and welcome to another episode of Dice Encounters and today we're going to talk about the ways that the players are going to trip you up again and again. That's cheeky little buggers. So first of all I've got to apologise because for two reasons actually. One because I haven't made a video in two months and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but also, I'm really sorry that I sound really weird because I'm a bit sick. But I don't want to wait any longer uh, to make a new video, and I've been having, I've had this in my back pocket for like a month, and I've really wanted to do this video. So here it is. It's the it's the ways that players are going to trip you up because I was doing my last session in Curse of Strahd, and uh, I had this great thing, this great moment that was coming up. I planned it. It was going to be amazing, and. Uh, one of the players is, I'm going through it, and one of the players is like, I'm going to cast this spell. And I'm like, I, don't, I have no idea what this spell is. It's like a level six spell. And he's, he reads it out to me, and I'm like, right, so you can just tell any NPC to do whatever you want for a year. For those of you who know all the spells, Gaius, Gaius, yeah, it, it actually isn't that, but this is how we, we, we thought it worked. And so my entire social encounter had to be turned on its head in a moment's notice. And it's something that I always like reprimand myself for in the moment. Like, why didn't I... Oh, I should have realised that players can actually do magic and alter reality now. They're like level nine. Um, but I always forget that's a thing. And, and then I go back and then I forget. And then two months later, it'll happen again. So this is what this video is about. It's all the ways that players are going to basically trip you up in little ways and you can actually prepare for them but they're kind of they're kind of in that you know it's not major enough to prepare for it it's not minor enough that you can brush it off it's still something that halts your your sessions so the first um the first pitfall as i like to call them um is the uh i want to go over there and uh, we all know this if you've ever run a game for new players or those players who think they're going to break the DM for some reason, um, they always they want to they want to go over there. You know, you said you said this is what's happening over here, and this is what this is, and this character said to go over here, and they go, no, I want to go over here. I want to go to the next town. You know, to mess with the DM or whatever it is, or because. I don't know, I, I, I like Skyrim, but that's what Skyrim, I, always, I never go to the first town, I always go to the next town. Um, and that's something that always trips me up, like, first of all, why? Second of all, uh, what do you expect to find in the second town? Like, can you not engage with the actual story that is in front of you? You know, haven't you not agreed to do this by coming and playing this game with us? You know, it's like sitting down playing Monopoly and going, I want to play on that Cluedo board over there instead. Take that. Um, it's ridiculous. Uh, but the ways you can kind of get around this um, is just have, like, consequences for players if they if they don't do the story, if they don't do the quest. You know, okay, you can go over there, and then next session you can uh, prepare this other, other town, and then, you can, and then you can make sure that they know that the town first town was destroyed or something really bad happened and you're like yeah it's because you you you, you, met, you buggered off you didn't want to do anything in the in the first town um or you can just do a little a little dm hack and you can just take all the stuff from the first town and put it in the second town and they'll be none the wiser uh because they don't want to go to that first town you go fine let's go to the second town this town is called pendelva uh there you go the second thing is uh, what i've mentioned before about players using spells that you have no no clue what they do, or you just kind of like forget they're a thing. Especially like mind mind control spells, I always forget. And I actually, I feel like there should be some more, there should be an expanded rule set for these kind of things, because this is something that always trips me up when a player is like, I'm going to use suggestion, or command, or, uh, you know, and that kind of thing. And sometimes the wording is, is in the ruling is such that you can't get them to like bring harm to themselves, or they can't attack allies, and, and all this kind of stuff. They kind of set like a bar, but it's more like a kind of a combat balance bar uh, rather than a social encounter bar. So, for example, in Curse of Strahd, this, this, uh, our cleric, he casted Gaius on uh, quite a major NPC. Um, for those of you who know the campaign, it's the one who turns out to be a, uh, a deva, an angel. And he was like, yeah, come with us to Castle Ravenloft and come and help us defeat Strahd. And, uh, and he just had to do that. 
Um, and it just seems really, really overpowered. Uh, and uh, my players notice that when I ask questions about spells, I'm like, and what's the duration? And is it, is it concentration? And, uh, and what level is that? And how many spell slots do you have left? I'm looking for the, for the weakness, for the downside, for the cost. Um, but yeah, other spells, even like low-level spells, like when I was a level th two, three ranger, I remember casting uh, Fog Cloud when we were surrounded by town guards. And uh, I, I used Fog Cloud to escape. And my DM was just like, and I was like, oh shit, I've done that thing that I hate what players do. And he was like, can you just go with the guards? I was like, okay, fine. Um, but you know, it's like magical characters have so many different abilities and ways that they can interact with a situation. Uh, and as a DM, it's annoying to have to know every single spell that the characters have. Um, one way I intend to get around this is play in a system where there isn't much magic. Yeah. Like Zweihander. Yeah, no mind control there. So the third, um, the third thing, the pitfall, is that uh, players, um, if they're getting given a quest by a, a authority figure uh, of like someone high up in the hierarchy of civilization, um, and that they are told to go and, and do this thing outside of town, to go and fight these monsters, to go and, and do something important, and uh, the players will say, or one of the players will say, uh, do you uh, want to lend us some of your guards? And this, is, and this is a bit of a tricky situation because, I mean, you think, yes, surely the, uh, the Lord, the Knight, would offer his soldiers to go with them because he wants them to succeed. And yeah, he does technically have guards just standing around doing nothing. But then it becomes a whole other thing when players are going off into dungeons with a whole uh, squad of soldiery uh, at their back. This is something in Curse of Strahd that I sort of uh, brought upon myself uh, when I allowed the players to kind of gather um, peasants and commoners to them to kind of storm Castle Ravenloft. And uh, the first thing they did after that was, oh, maybe we'll go to the big town and try and get some soldiers to come with us as well. And kind of the only real ways to get around that is um, either the guards are needed, there's no spare. I mean, you need to have guards posted where they need to be posted to protect certain things, the walls, the gates, the, you know, the houses, the, the treasury, whatever it is. Um, you can describe the guards as being pretty much like not soldiers they could just be you know militia town you know town guard they could just be old and the old and the young and the infirm like me right now uh with just you know really crap armor uh looking pretty lazy pretty unfit you could suggest that the guards are actually in someone else's pocket uh you could suggest that uh you have to pay them but if you want to if you want to do it or you can't find a way out then in the dungeon itself you can also just, you know, you know it's, it's annoying having to get like stat blocks and names and all this kind of thing for all these guards. Uh, instead, you could just use them as kind of trap bait. So for every extra soldier they have, put a new trap in the dungeon or something. Or like, if, if that feels a little bit too unfair, then maybe just let them use the guards to trigger traps or let them, you know, go first and, you know, give them just really crap stats because they probably would have crap stats because they've probably never even been in a fight before. Or you just make the, uh, the quest giver make it very clear that uh, this is a job that is a bit too dirty, a bit too lowly, a bit too dangerous or suicidal um, for him to waste his good men on it. Uh, maybe he wants some level two adventurers to go and do it because you know, there is, a, there is a job market for mercenaries. There is a type of job that you hire mercenaries for, not send your own guys. My fourth pitfall um, is a thing that happens quite a lot. Um, it's normally with certain type of players who do this. Um, you'll, you'll know them when you, when you play with them almost immediately. Uh, but they like, to, they like to have characters who are stupid, um, basically because they've made intelligence their dump stat, which means they've made intelligence their lower stat because they're not a, a wizard or anything. Um, so they've got eight intelligence, which is like minus two. And uh, they think this is this gives them leave to act in a way which is disruptive and counterproductive to the party. 
this also has a little bit of flavour of the I want to go over there guy who uh, wants to uh, uh, break the DM or like ruin their plans um, for some idiotic reason. This is otherwise known as chaotic stupid. Um, uh, but you know the yeah, it's the same as the first the first guy. You know, it's you've come to play this game, you are playing this game. One of the rules of this game is you are here, you want to go on an adventure. Uh, and your characters are working together and they have an interest to work together and it doesn't need to be written down on a character sheet you don't have to have a reason to have to want to work with the players you should just want to work with the party that's the whole reason you're here otherwise you need to make a new character and also you know doing sort of stupid stupid stuff uh, for no reason um, and, and sort of uh, working counter the party like People can have low intelligence and not and have like self have self awareness. They can have um, they can be conscious of the situation. Uh, you know, uh, one example is um, if they meet the king of the realm, uh, they're not going to go and give him a little tickle. Um, they're not going to do that, uh, <laughs> and it may seem like oh, it's a really funny thing to do because you can. It's D and D, um, and my character is really stupid. Uh, but you know, if you think about it, like, no, they will know that's not something that you should do uh, to a king. So there's, there's an in-game way of fixing it, and there is an out-of-game way of fixing it. And uh, so the out-of-game way of fixing it is just to gently remind players who are probably new as well that that thing that I just said, the, play, you know, the character you're playing in, the character you're, the character you're playing as, has got this far in life. Uh, without being arrested, thrown in jail, executed, or driven from the land. So therefore, he must have, he or she must have a survival uh, instinct as well to not do chaotically stupid stuff. Um, and it's kind of that, that thing about, you know, uh, thieves. Oh, you know, he grew up a thief, so he's always thieving, and he can't stop thieving, and he's always thieving. Um, no, if he's got this far as a thief, and he's not in jail or dead then he knows when not to steal. The in-game way of doing it is just to have your NPC... And this, this is difficult. This takes... This is quite hard. But you can get these NPCs to react in a way uh, which neutralises the situation. So in the case of the Tickle King, as we shall know now, call him. In the case of the King being tickled, maybe the King's in a good mood and maybe he's just like laughs a bit and then kind of like looks down his nose at the character and just goes like hmm, what an amusing jester you have um and that that one that completely shuts down the player because they tried to break the dm or whatever it is uh and you've just turned it on its head and just rolled with it and that'll like make them think oh that wasn't that wasn't very fun i didn't disrupt anything i didn't make anyone sweat and it also shows that you've got some pretty good uh dm chops because you will encounter players who want to break the fourth wall, who do want to try and be a little bit disruptive for laughs. Um, and it really like behooves a DM to be able to roll with those uh, and to incorporate it into the fiction and just keep everything grounded in the fiction. If you break the fiction, you know, if you have to like break the immersion and come back into out of character and you have to tell the players, you know, can you please not do that? Can you just do this? And don't forget that your characters are like this. And, you know, in this kind of place, it wouldn't really happen like that. But yes, as I said, it's quite difficult to do that it's quite difficult to roll with the punches when the players kind of break that that kind of um the fantasy trope immersion um but it's something that is definitely is worth working on and something that i try to work on as well uh and yeah this is something that always trips me up so it's it's a good thing to do my fifth and final pitfall uh is um i want to buy x um so in D D, especially Players get a lot of gold, they get a lot of stuff. The whole game is built around getting stuff. Um, and actually, in the old editions, uh, stuff was tied to experience points. So the more stuff you looted, the more XP you gained. Nowadays, that's not a thing, but they still give you shit tons of stuff. And players end up with like a lot of, a lot of loot and nowhere to put it. Players who are gamers are going to want that economy. They're going to want that thing where they can take all that loot they've they've painfully earned or gained and they want to translate it into weapons and armor and useful stuff 
Um, but there is no economy like that in D&D. You can't buy magical items, you can't buy magical weapons just anywhere in a town. Uh, the stuff you can buy that's in the player's handbook is is pretty much like starting gear, apart from like full plate armor. I'm having this issue in Curse of Strahd at the moment where, you know, there are no like places that sell weapons and if they do sell weapons or like they sell stuff then everything's super inflated and one of my players just wants a shield so he's going around every single guard and, and, and authority figure saying please sell me a shield <laughs> and uh yeah it's 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 a tricky one you know luckily all the stuff that is 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 sellable is pretty it's okay it's pretty crap and and you should be giving them magic items and magic weapons and armor as they go along doing the quests so they kind of know that the quests are how you get the best loot rather than the money but it's still very strange that they have so much money i think the best way to get around this is if the players really want to spend all their cash on on a specific thing then make make a kind of a mini quest a side quest out of it you know make them uh, have to pay for information to know where the the best armor is or the best weaponsmith is and and the convince the party they have to go to this place to find the best armor the blacksmith uh, up in the mountains or whatever it is who uses a special type of folded steel and that can be a really fun way of doing that of course if you're in the middle of curse of strad you can't really do that um because you've got a you've got a vampire to kill and you know worst case scenario is you just have to inform them that this isn't uh, diablo or borderlands uh, this is not a looter shooter uh, there is not new loot every session um a lot of the time in dnd you you have your starting equipment for a very very long time okay that was my uh, five dm pitfalls and how to avoid them um i hope my voice isn't too annoying and weird with this block nose sinusy stuff going on um, and hopefully we'll get to make another video next week uh, and I will stop having this mess I will end this massive break that I've had the good news is I've managed to uh, my brain has still been working even though I haven't had the time to make videos I have had uh, my brain has been working on new ideas so I've got like a whole backlog of, of cool uh, DM tips um, uh, to work on so that should be should be pretty interesting and as always, head over to DiceEncounters.com to read this blog and, and plenty of others and check out the channel for all my other videos. Um, and that is it. I will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Until then.